Hey, good morning, everybody. So glad you guys could join us online. Right where you are, just like last week, let's lift our voices together and worship Jesus. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much strong? Great. 
Father, we are here, gathered together right now to worship you, to give you all the glory and honor you are due, to tell you, God, that we trust you. We know that your word is true and your promises can never be broken, that you are with us, Lord, and you will not leave us. And I ask for everyone watching online right now, everyone gathered together as a church, as a body, that we would breathe in your peace and your love and your strength, that you would open our hearts and minds to receive all that you have for us today and be with each one. In Jesus' name. Faith Alive Church. Well, I'm so glad that you guys are with us today. Please get a good cup of coffee and uh, let's gather together right there in your home. Let's gather together to uh, get into the Word of God. And I know we've had a wonderful time of praise and worship, uh, celebrating the goodness of God. And today I want to share with you a very, very powerful message that God has put on my heart. And uh, before I get into the message today, just, just a couple of things for you to know. In, 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 for next week, we're going to be presenting to you a couple of projects that we want to do for the community uh, here in West Branch. And one of them is a, is a food truck distribution. And we're going to be giving you more information on Easter Sunday next week. And then we're also going to be feeding the hospital staff. And uh, we will be providing links on our app for you to be able to give towards that if that's something that God places upon your heart. And what an awesome opportunity for us as Christians to let our light shine for Jesus Christ. Today I want to thank you for your faithfulness uh, in giving. Um, So many of you, uh, even in these difficult times, have been faithful to support the church Some of you have been giving your tithe online, on our app, through our website. Also, some of you have been mailing that into the church. And we just want to say thank you for your generosity. And we will just continue to trust God for his faithfulness to to, uh, provide all of our needs. Uh, And the Bible is very clear about that. So thank you guys so much for your faithfulness to give. Well, today I'm, I'm going to get into a message that God has laid upon my heart, and it's really a, a new series for the entire month of April. I had a, a different series planned for this month, and I really felt appropriate to push that, that series back and, and really preach and share from my heart with what is happening uh, in our world today. And the title of my series is Hope in the Darkness. I am glad we have hope in the darkness and that the light of Jesus Christ is shining and that we are finding direction in times of adversity. And we are going through some really difficult times right now, as I know you are so aware of. It has affected all of us. And we are trusting God through this. And I want these messages to speak to you and to encourage you and to fill us with hope. That's what we need is hope in the darkness. And God is our hope. And today I want to preach a sermon called, When God is Quiet. What do you do when God is quiet? There are times that you and I go through challenging times And it seems as if God is quiet. God, where are you in all of this? And I want you to know today that God is with us. 
The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 through 27, it is a story in the Bible of Jesus and the disciples on the Sea of Galilee going through a storm. And the Bible says this in verse 23, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going down. And he replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Underline that in your Bible, or mark that, or remember that. Write that statement down. Write there what Jesus said. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Those are powerful words for today. Why are you so afraid, you of little faith? Today I want to give you three words that I notice out of this story in the Bible. Very simple words, but they speak volumes to my life knowing that, that this is what God has for us in our day as well. They had storms in the Bible just like you and I are going through storms in our own personal lives. So write that down. Number one is the word storm. The Bible says a storm came without warning. With, uh, like suddenly, the storm arose. And the Sea of Galilee is a, is a very unusual body of water. It's relatively small, 13 miles long and 7 miles wide, and it's 150 feet deep. And sudden storms can come over the mountains right next to the Sea of Galilee without warning, stirring the water. And even I read that it can cause 20-foot waves to crash against them. They were caught without warning. This was so unexpected. And when you think about our, what we're going through today in our time, the, that it, is, it, is, it was unexpected. There are some things about what we're going through I was not anticipating. Yes, I did realize that the coronavirus was a very serious thing that was going on in a different country, something that they were dealing with. But it was still unexpected how it has impacted our country country, the stay at home, the no work, and, and how they have canceled school, the impact on our society, the impact on the health of people. The hospitals are so overrun now with patients. The impact on our economy and, and on our own personal finances, not knowing how long it will last. I'm 47 years old, and I've never experienced anything like this. Not being able to meet in the church building that we have done for so many years, and now we are at home, and thank God for technology. Thank God that we're able to have church, and we can still worship together. We know that church is not just a building. Yes, this is a special place that we come, and we can worship God corporately. But we all know that church is people and that we can worship God. We are the sanctuary. You know, we may, we may worship God in the sanctuary. We call this the sanctuary at the church. But I want you to know you and I are the temple. We are the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful for that. The Bible says the storm was furious. It was without warning, and it was a furious storm. Now, this storm simply means it was massive. The word furious in the Greek means a massive, great storm in the widest sense. It's, it was difficult to avoid the storm. It was so large, and Jesus and the disciples were, were heading somewhere. 
Jesus was in the boat with them, and a storm came, and it shook them. It caused incredible amount of commotion. And you know you're going through a furious storm when it's anything that takes away your peace. If you have lost your peace, you are going through a storm, something that alters the plan that you were on. Maybe you were heading in a direction, and all of a sudden, something happens that that catches us off guard, and we're trying to do the will of God, just like they were in this story. They They were simply following Jesus. The Bible says they followed Jesus into the boat, and they went into this storm. They were in the will of God going through this storm, and it impacted their lives. And they were dealing with a hindrance. And you and I can be dealing with hindrances in our own personal life. And it can be as simple. It doesn't, you know, it's not even something as large as what we're going through as a nation. It can even be simple things that can, we would consider a storm. Something as simple as a, a burned roast that delays the family meal. It could be a shattered relationship that that with a loved one or a misplaced business papers, uh, you know, because you have a, a looming deadline in the moment for the person. This is a big deal. People go through storms <clears throat> in their lives. Whether you have an illness in your body, there are people right now who are struggling with illness. Some people are going through storms financially. You know, they, they, they have their health, but they're struggling financially. There are, there are even companies that are really strong companies that are struggling to even make payroll right now. There are churches that are struggling. There are pastors that I know that are, are scrambling. People are losing their jobs. This is a furious storm that we are going through in our lives. And the Bible says that this storm swept over the boat. The storm swept over the boat. You know, when you think of something sweeping over the boat, it could even be negative thoughts can begin to sweep over you as you are going through a storm in your life. Fear can sweep over our lives. And we feel like there's no end in sight. The Bible says that they went through a storm just like you and I are going through a storm. But the second thing I notice is that God was quiet. Write that down. The Bible says that that Jesus was quiet. Jesus fell asleep. And I'm thinking, here in the middle of a storm, Jesus Christ is sleeping. He's resting which tells me a couple things. First of all, it says that, that, that Jesus was peaceful in the storm. He was not worried at all about the storm, even though the disciples were literally freaking out. It was like, ah! I mean, they were just panicking. They're scrambling. They're running around, and they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to You know, how do we get out of this situation? And they're looking at Jesus, and and the Bible says that Jesus is sleeping. And they they are wondering why he is asleep. And I think you and I can learn from Jesus. When we are in a storm, we can be like the disciples. We can panic. We can be afraid. Or we can be like Jesus Christ, and we can be completely at rest, knowing that God is with us. And the disciples felt as if they had no control. One of the scariest things that you and I go through in our lives is when we feel we don't have control over a situation. And that always creates panic. But we need to be reminded today as a church, even though we are going through the storm, And God may be quiet. I want you to know that God is with us and you and I can be at peace. We don't have to panic like the rest of the world. Let's learn from Jesus and stay peaceful in the storm. I know they were fighting to stay alive. You know, it can be so difficult 
to focus on God when he's quiet. It is so difficult. There have been several days that I have every ounce of strength to, to be able to, to not listen to other voices. And I want you to know, don't let any voice be louder than the voice of God. Don't let any other voice be reminded of the promises of God. That God is always faithful and he will help us through this difficult time. So stay peaceful in the storm. Also, remember that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. The Bible says that. I believe that Jesus was quiet and at rest in the storm. He was peaceful because he knew that his father was taking him somewhere. I think we forget the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 4, verse 38. He said, let us go to the other side. Let us go to the other side of the lake. And it's amazing how the storm distracts us from his word. The storm is distracting. And we forget about what God has said. Let us go to the other side. We are going somewhere. God has a plan. God has a purpose for our lives. <clears throat> God has a purpose for America. America is not going down. God has a plan and a purpose for this great country. And I believe on the other side of the storm is going to be an incredible victory for us. I believe that so strong in my heart. Be reminded of the promises of God. Do not be distracted. <clears throat> Jesus knew there was a plan on the other side of the storm. So he didn't worry. And I really do believe on the other side of this storm for our lives is an incredible victory for us. We already have the victory through Jesus Christ. But I really believe this storm has risen out of, and, and it's just kind of come out of nowhere against us as God's people, against our country. But I believe with all my heart, God has a plan and a purpose, and we are going somewhere, and we need to be reminded today, don't let any voice be louder than the voice of God, and to know that God will fulfill his plan and his purpose in our lives. God has a plan. Let's say that together. Right there in your, in your house, I want you to say that. God has a plan. Let's say it again. God has a plan. And he will fulfill his plan. And it's going to be okay. I want you to know, be at rest today. Even if you're in the midst of a storm, let's be like Jesus. Let's be at rest. Let's be calm. Let's be reminded of the promises of God. You know, as I spend time in prayer, it is amazing to me when I really get into prayer and I get into the presence of the Holy Spirit, the things that God says to me, it's not what I'm hearing on the news. It's under like two different messages. The news says one thing. <clears throat> I hear on social media a different, you know, the, all these messages are fearful and panic. This is never going to end. This is just going to drag on and on and on. And I really believe with all my heart that when I get into, when I get with God, it's like I hear a completely different message. You and I need to go to a higher frequency. Make sure that you are getting the news from God. It's okay to go to listen to the news to find out what's going on, but don't let that affect your faith and cause panic in your life. Always remember that God is doing something and God <clears throat> is working in our lives and he will get us through the storm to the other side. Do you know that Jesus, when he got to the other side, do you know that once he dealt with the storm, it was just on the other side of the storm that there was a great victory? The Bible says there was a demon-possessed man and he ran up to Jesus when they got to the other side of the lake and this man was wanting help and he, he knelt before Jesus 
And the Bible says that he was demon-possessed. And Jesus delivered that man. The Bible says that that man probably had thousands of, of demons, the, the name Legion. I know you guys are familiar with the story. Jesus said, what is your name? And he says, we are legion because we are many. That word legion means like 6,000. It was, it was a way of trying to intimidate Jesus. It was a way of, of, of this spirit saying, we have many numbers here. And this didn't affect Jesus at all. He simply dealt with the spirit cast it out into the pigs. And the Bible says the pigs went and they were drowned. They were killed. It was a great deliverance that day. I believe that Jesus was dealing with the spirit that was over an entire region. Many in numbers. And that storm arose right before that great victory. Now, whether you believe the storm was a spiritual attack or whether it was a natural storm that just rose, it was something to hinder because on the other side was an incredible victory that Jesus performed. Great deliverance in an entire region. And I want you to know that God, I believe, on the other side of this storm has incredible, incredible victory for America, has incredible victory for the body of Christ, has incredible victory for you and for me. And I believe God is going to fulfill his plan. Amen. The third word I want to talk about today is the word hope. <clears throat> Jesus said, why are you afraid? You of little faith. They had a lack of confidence. And there's something about storms that really challenge our faith. When we're going through storms like we are, storms can cause us to lose sight of the promises of God. And storms can even test and reveal our faith. I want you to know that your faith and my faith is really being tested right now. But I want us to continue to hold on to God. Never lose hope. There's always the light shining in the darkness. And I truly believe that we will see the sun shine again. The Bible says that Jesus rebuked the winds and the waves. Now that word rebuke means to correct or redirect the storm, the storm that had come against them, to, to prevent them from going forward. Jesus stood and he rebuked that wind and waves, and the Bible says that that storm had to obey him and to begin to cease. Now think about Jesus rebuking the storm. And I want you to know that Jesus can do the same thing today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he is rebuking the storm. And you and I need to be in agreement that God is going to turn this around. That God is going to bring peace in the midst of the storm. And the storm will cease. And God is going to do that in our day. I believe it's just right around the corner. I believe in just here in a short amount of time, we are going to begin to see interventions from God. I believe that God is going to reverse this and we're going to begin to see numbers decline over the next few weeks. That is my prayer. That is, that is what I'm, I'm praying and trusting God for. I know you are as well. That God will remove this storm and bring peace. And as you and I are going through the storm, we can have peace inside. Some of you have a storm inside of you. It's not just an external storm, but some of us have storms inside. And I want you to know that God doesn't just bring peace to the storms out here, but he can also calm the storm inside of you and inside of me. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. 
You know, let's not let fear control our lives. I want to encourage every one of you watching right now, those of you who can hear my voice and don't fear, don't be consumed by panic, don't be consumed by fear. Yes, we do want to be wise. <clears throat> we don't want to just be, you know, we, we, want to, we want to make sure we are listening to our government. It is important to, you know, the Bible tells us to do that. The Bible says to submit to all governing authorities. But let's, let's not panic. And let's not allow fear and confusion to fill our, our hearts and our minds. And I want you to know today to just stand still. To just be at rest. We need to face the storm. <clears throat> I'm not saying we pretend as if the storm isn't there. But I want you to be at rest in the storm. As we face the storm. Why? Because God is with us. He will help us. He's going to get us through this. I believe that with all of my heart, all of my soul, that God is going to help us through this. And I want you to see God in the midst of even the most desperate and severe difficulties that we're going through. I still want you to see God, that He is, he is with us. See Him in the storm. See Him with you in the storm. And the last thing I want to say today is I want to encourage you. One of the things that I've been working on a lot for my own personal life is to be careful that I'm not speaking out of my emotions. Sometimes you and I speak our fear. We speak out of our emotions. And I don't think that's what God wants. I don't think God wants us to speak out of fear and to open our mouth and to begin to just talk our panic. This is, we're going down. Nothing's going to work. This is, we're just going to, you know, I mean, we just talk, 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 talk. We're talking out of our fear. And God wants us to speak out of faith. Don't speak out of frustration. That will only discourage you more. You will only discourage the people around you if you continue to speak out of your emotions. Let's come into agreement with God. Let's hang on to the promises of God. And I want you to know that we are in a storm. But Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And don't let the storms of life drown out the promises of God. Don't let any voice be louder than the voice of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are with us. And Lord, we do not need to be afraid. This is a, this is a very serious storm that we are going through. Throughout, it's affecting the entire world. But God, I pray today that you would help us to not be consumed by fear and consumed by panic, cons consumed by any confusion. But God, I pray that we would simply stand still and be at rest, just like Jesus in the storm. He was sleeping. May we be peaceful in the storm, knowing, God, that you will get us through to the other side. We thank you, Lord, for the great victory that you are setting us up for. I thank you, God, that you're going to help us through this. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Right there in your home, will you ask the Lord, say, God, fill me with your peace. Go ahead and give God all of your fear right now. Cast all of your burdens on the Lord whatever you're going through right now, and just say, God, give me peace in the storm. Because Jesus, I know that you are with me in this storm. 
and we are going somewhere in our life, you have a plan, you have a purpose, you have direction, and we thank you, Lord, that you're going to get us through this time. We're learning to trust you. Right now, just say, God, give me your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are watching this and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would invite you to, to welcome Jesus into your life. Will you just open your heart right now to the Lord? Will you just say, Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life, wash me with your blood, Thank you for cleansing me. I am your child. Will you just, right where you're at, will you just confess your sins to God and ask Him to save you? Ask Him to be your Lord. Ask Him to be your Savior. The Bible says that He is standing at the door and He is knocking and He wants to come in. And if we will open the door of our heart, He will come in and have fellowship with us. I want you to know today that if you have received Jesus Christ <clears throat> as your Lord and Savior, you are saved. You are a child of God. I pray God's blessings on you today. I pray God's peace upon you. If, even in the midst of this storm, I want you to be at rest and always remember don't let any voice be louder than the voice of God. God bless you guys. We will see you soon.